In over 60 years, we've only ever seen this happen two times, but what is it and how much impact will it have on you as a trader or investor in the markets right now? Well, that along with insider traders currently selling more than they're buying has people a little bit worried. More importantly, what's going on with the long-term trend of the market as we reach 5,000 and a pretty good technical take profit zone? This level is very important for more than one reason. And today we'll discuss it in our special weekend edition of stocks, commodities, and cryptos around the world, along with the hidden divergences of some weird stuff that's turning a little bit defensive. Let's get into it together right now. Well, welcome back everybody to The Daily Show where we talk about the macro lead indicators and hottest charts together. We've got some massive data coming up in today's show, but let's talk about market internals to get started. Google and Apple, not so good, but some big returns from levels that we discussed. Mean reversion on Google and obviously Apple coming back down to our most accumulated zone. But if it wasn't for Nvidia, Meta and Amazon, the week would have looked very different. These stocks held it up and you can actually see that semiconductors were really quite weak if it wasn't for the biggest of them all. Just a reminder as well, this week does matter. So we're sending out our VIP free weekly newsletter just before the market opens. Make sure to subscribe for that, totally free. Links in the description down below. Let's start off with a bit of a review though of the jobs numbers before we get into those stats that have only happened two times in 60 years. Yes, 2023 is now in the bag in terms of the 17th best year for US jobs growth. And you can see why. In terms of services, we saw massive jumps in the January period. But probably what's most disturbing about all of this is the average. December and January now look like massive outliers. And while you might've thought this was just one, we've now got two to go with it. And it's a huge difference in contrast to what we saw during the other periods. Now, admittedly, we do tend to see very big January results, but this certainly was way more than the market expected. And it led us into only being at 3.7% unemployment still, which means the Fed is not really done yet. And it probably brings up that we're not going to see any rate cuts at this stage, according to the market anyway, until May or even later in this year. And that eventually will take a toll, you would think, on this exuberance about AI and these big stocks. What about the long-term averages, though? When we look at over well over 200 years of data, you can see here that the markets are not anywhere near their mean. You might think, well, initially, that's kind of scary. The reason I want to bring this up is really just to discuss forward PE. Because as we know, we're sitting at about 20 to 20.5 at the moment on Ford PE, with the average being at about 16.8. Now, this is important because insiders are starting to sell their own stocks. And I think a lot of it is just because they're cashing in on these big price valuations that they think are a little bit too rich on the long-term average. Anyway, it's a story that we will be looking at, but really this is the big one here, advances and declines. Yes, we saw some really weird stats. First up, it's already rare to see such a low amount of advances with an over 1% day, but then we have so many more declines than the advances across the board. If this keeps up, it's a very worrying market internal sign. I actually posted over on the X account over here that we've only ever had this happen one other time on the New York Stock Exchange, where we had a 1% surge with more than there's over two losers for every winner. And that happened after Black Monday. That was the only other time we ever saw it. But what about the stats? What happens around that period? Well, luckily we do have the stats for when we have an over 1% daily gain with more declining than advancing stocks. And the results were really peppered all over the tech boom. So is this the same? Probably not. But in general, you can see the stats tend to be actually a little bit negative for the markets. 12 months later, yeah, not so good. But really what I think is more interesting here is what tends to happen in the next month. If we are going into a period of weakness, we should know it pretty soon because we're hitting 5K on the markets. But also we're hitting into a lot of these kind of sideways to down stats. So let's take a look now at what I mean by that. First up, what about the NASDAQ? What's it doing that's weird? Well, yields are up and NASDAQ is up. Now, that's only ever happened a few other times. And if we end up seeing this for the year, it's got some bad company. 2024 would have 2009, 1999 periods of time you don't really want to be in. Now, in Q4 of 2023, it kind of made a bit more sense. Yields were down and the NASDAQ was up. Of course, we were seeing that expectation that the Fed was going to do some rate cuts. That now may be changing. 
So that makes us ask the question, are we still in a tech earnings by the rumor style sell the fact with FOMC kind of being a trigger? Remember the FOMC led the markets down and then tech earnings looked pretty bad at the start with really it being saved by Amazon and Meta overall. And that's leading us into, of course, being at about 50 points higher, just underneath 5,000 right now from this chart. But we've talked about this, the idea that we had a six-month rally, then we have a bit of a pullback or a pullback in time. And I think it still seems likely. And there's a couple of reasons. Let's go through sentiment first up. 49.1% of people reacted bullish. Now, that looks good on the surface, but we know that when we start to get into the 40s and 50s, that we either see pullback sideways or down statistically moving forward over the next coming weeks. We also know that 26.4% are neutral and still a low amount of bears compared to the historical averages of bulls and bears across the board. We also do know that bullish percent index got worse on Friday. In fact, if I update this chart, and I'll just show you what it looks like, that's what it looks like right now. It's showing further declines, which tends to be a bit of a signal that market internals are starting to weaken off, especially when we've hit an 80. In fact, the one, two, three, four, and now fifth time that this has happened over the last kind of year, we've seen declines in the market. And I think that is very important to note that it is a lag. So what happens is it tends to show us it. And then a few weeks later, we could see the actual results of that particular big, big sentiment indicator switch. Now returns after the Q declines. What about this? Well, because we saw FOMC decision day actually drop the market, it also leads us into believing that we're in a weird period. Now, it all leads back into this, really. And it all leads into the fact that we've had a great run. We've had over 20% gains over the last 14 weeks. And when we tend to see that in a new all-time high, we, although we don't have maybe too many stats, you can kind of see that the next couple of weeks become a bit weird and then it becomes very good. So basically what it's saying is that if we do get a pullback, that really it should be thought about as being a buyer's pullback. And I guess that's one of the things that is here. We can also see that February performance tends to be a bit like kind of over the top at the beginning, maybe a little bit of a rally, and then it drops off. Now, what about presidential years? What about the type of period that we're in right now? Does that make sense? Well, we've had this one on for a while. And of course, if I updated the chart here, we'd be kind of here right now with sitting president running. So it's interesting to see that the market is actually rallying up and it's trading like this that could lead into that February, March sell-off, that Q1 sell-off. Now, if that does end up occurring, then of course, we're looking at April being the most important month of the year really to show us that the rest is good. And of course, we're looking for these types of stats, pullbacks to be met by bull demand, thanks to Wayne's data here, which says that the year should be pretty good. So should you be freaking out as an investor? I would say most likely not at this stage. Puts are incredibly cheap, according to Goldman Sachs. CTAs are incredibly overbought, which we've already talked about. And we've only just seen potentially the starts of a little decline on these. But we will update you, so make sure to subscribe if CTAs start to decline, because we know that's a good read as well. So what do we find ourselves doing this week? Well, when we look at expiration dates moving forward, you might notice that 5K is super stacked. This level is massive. Of course, psychologically, it's a huge deal. And we stopped about 20 to 25 points just before it happened the other day. Now, usually when you get close to a big number like this, we either smash it like 100 points above very quickly, or usually we find some kind of weakness around it. And just before hitting it as well, a lot of the time. So 4,900 is kind of the technical put zone at this point where there are a little bit of buyers, but 5,000 in terms of options is a big wall. And that's going to be a problem for it this week. To get off the US markets just for a second though, we saw some other stats that might surprise you. Now we talked about the Chinese markets a little bit. We bought it up two weeks ago and we discussed the idea that we were in capitulation and that maybe we would see even a further decline, which you'll see on a stat later on. Now, some of them did. The Shanghai Composite actually went to a three-year low with five days of declining with very little breadth oh, in terms of the improvement. Now, you might notice that this is a classic with overall sold, oversold markets. And in fact, when we've seen similar reads, which aren't too many again, we've had a 100% strike rate over the last 12 months. We know that we had Evergrande filing for bankruptcy. Often that can be considered close to lows, as we see with the WorldCom filing here back in history. 
And here's where we had the stat two weeks ago, which basically said that the Hang Seng Index got smashed and that a lot of the time with the Chinese stocks, we would see about two weeks later, potentially a new low, but then things would maybe turn. Now, funnily enough, the Shanghai Comp, CQQ, KWeb almost, they were all kind of getting close to making those new lows. So what about the Chinese stocks is interesting this week. Well, one of the things is we've got Alibaba. So that's, of course, giving us a return. We'll find out what's going on there, but don't sleep on earnings. It's still big earnings. We've got McDonald's, Caterpillar, Palantir, obviously a lot of the social media networks as well and smaller tech companies, and they're all coming out with their earnings this week. This will probably either improve the breadth or it will increase some kind of buy the rumor, sell the fact. So remember, if we start to see all of these not doing well, which we don't know yet, uh, then that's going to be a big issue. And do be reminded that we have some monsters in terms of moves. Options markets can tell us what the expected moves are. And you can see here that Palantir is going to be a plus minus 12. Roblox is going to be even bigger than that. And PayPal and some of the others that have been recovering recently, even Disney is expected to be a plus minus 6.5% according to the options markets. That's a big deal. These are big, big opportunities. And if you see the right moves, they could be even opportunities to pick up what you might want to be looking at on stocks that have already been beaten down. There's a lot of those still going on in the markets right now. What about big volume, dark pull activity? Before we go into the charts, have we seen any huge trades that have us a little bit worried? Well, this is KBE, which is a bank ETF, mostly regional banks. And you can see here that there's a big trade that went through. Now, historically, there were some huge trades that went through a little while ago. And they led on to what we saw was a bit of a flash sell across regional banks. So we're obviously getting, you know, banking kind of issues again that usually would sell the markets off, but they're just not doing it right now. We also had a big trade on Meta. So as Meta opened, I kind of theorized that somebody would probably have a go at it. Now, it could be just take profits. Maybe someone had some information about how good Meta was going. They sold it. They were pretty happy with themselves. Why wouldn't they be? Thank you very much for that 20% gain plus. And there is a big trade up here. But if we continue to see a smattering of trades, it could again, if price action then starts getting sold off, show us that there is a problem. Basically though, Meta was trading on all the things that the stock market likes. New dividend, Apple obviously liked that. So did Meta when it happens. And then of course, you've got a nice buyback on top, which always helps to usually start the kind of hype train on markets. 20% though, that's pretty big gains. And of course, if it fails, it was really what was picking the markets up last week. Meta had the one of the biggest trades on it, of course, 6.55 times 90-day volume. So big, big trades there. Across the board, some massive ones. And if you look at the options themselves, there was 51 million trade versus 40 with 57% of the market going into calls. So basically, this is showing us that uh, we have a lot of calls overall in the market still. Everyone's buying the dip still. And unless that changes and we start to see you know, some price action towards the downside. I guess we can't really predict yet that the market's coming off. We just have some very warning, very good warning signs. Um, and of course, if you'd like selling markets or you like to go against them, you have to choose instrument selection. Options would be one of the safer ways if you know what you're doing. So let's now take a look at the market internals because things were getting weird. Gold was down 3.4 thanks to really yields being up. And we saw communications, semiconductors, and consumer discretionary, thanks to Amazon and Meta, et cetera, moving forward. Now, if you think about the next five days or the last five days, this is where things are really strange. Staples, healthcare. We've got a special coming up on healthcare soon as it's approaching a big level, but they were the best performers or close to the best performers over the last five days. And that's usually not what you want to see if you have a market that's really healthy and great. And the reason why that is, is because, of course, they're considered defensives. KRE as well is now down 7.21% over the last five days, also showing that there's some weird things going on under the hood. So just how weird does it get? Well, let's have a look here at the S&P 500 straight away. And I just want to mention here that we're actually on an interesting extension. So this extension is a Fibonacci extension that usually is well considered as a TP zone. And it happens just before the 5K level. Now, this could be a bit of a warning sign that we're getting close to that kind of topping zone. Do we have any weakness? Absolutely not. We'll look at it later on, but it is there. What about central bank liquidity, though? These two lines here. So you can see here that central bank liquidity is dropping across the board, which obviously means it's a little bit less support 
from the overall central banks. And the VVIX did drop off, but expect this to possibly still spike in earnings and of course if price goes down the vix itself is pretty much dead this year in terms of us doing proper analysis on it as you can see here most of the most of the traders out there as i understand it if the vix did spike a lot of hedging would have to go on which would force quite a lot of selling in the market so do maybe set an alert here above 15 just in case it happens as that's going to be a pretty big trigger point what about yields? Well, we saw yields go down and then up. And of course, basically speaking, this was a pretty big deal. Now, markets rallied into what you wouldn't think they could do, which is the yields would come back down to this important level and then they would go up and the market would rally with them. You know, a big number like that, our jobs. Yeah, sure, it's good for the economy theoretically, but not good for what the Fed is trying to do. So it really means higher rates for longer. And it sent treasuries down as well, which has been one of our favorites over the last week. We talked a lot about 93, 94 being a buy zone. And um, it got all the way to 98 plus, almost 99. And then, of course, it sold off a bit. Is this something to worry about? I don't think so yet. I still think it's pretty good. And, of course, treasuries over, it should really be considered over the long haul. What about when we look at bonds markets? Well, bonds markets were strong then, of course, uh, a little bit a little bit weak in terms of overall the last couple of weeks. We did have a big Friday for them though, so no real indications there. Home builders held their own. We've been talking about this possibly being distribution. They didn't really move. And the American consumer XLY versus XLP, that was holding its own, mostly thanks to Amazon. Remember, if we keep seeing things like XLY weakening against XLP, that's not a good sign for the internals of the market. And it brings us back to this chart, which is, of course, our treasury yields versus our high yields, so our junk bonds. If we keep seeing this rise off, then that's going to show us again that market internals are starting to weaken across the board. These are all things that a swing trader or a position-based trader is going to be looking at. Of course, a scalper is going to be like, well, it doesn't matter for me just yet because I don't care. I just want instant price action. That's more for a predictor that's starting to look at the internals and saying, you know what, this is the weirdest thing that we've seen any point over the last five months and of course it's been it was pretty much positive 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 up until the start of january then some stuff started getting a little bit weird and even since that point the markets have really just shown that certain stocks have been picking up not the rest of them let's move over to copper now so dr copper has been weakening and you can see here big rejection week on the weekly not a positive sign i'd still have alerts above 395 just in case if that does happen then of course i think that uh, copper's on an absolute tear at that point so it's worthwhile setting the alert. But if you're looking at this chart right now, you would say that looks pretty weak after hitting that big level. The dollar index finally did hit it. So yeah, 103.80, the parroting worked. And we got there in a way that I didn't think we'd probably get there. But anyway, we did get there. And we managed to close the weekly at these points. So we can see here, this is where if the dollar is going to weaken, you would look for weakness and we'll be watching the charts. It's worthwhile setting alerts underneath here as well for big term swing traders, because if that happens, I would say that the dollar is possibly going underneath parity. So there's some big zones coming up for it. And I think some really great trades coming forward for the dollar. But if you've held it strong and you've held it for this bullish movement, congrats. This is one that I felt that we've talked about for, uh, yeah, well, it's been a while now. So it's been all of January <laughs> into Feb. So it's, it's been a while for that trade to come through. Anyway, it's done it now. Gold. Now, this is interesting. We didn't end up closing above 2055, so we didn't get a big rally there. We came back down to the most traded zone, and we got one, two, three wicks now coming off this level. So you can see from the top down, it's testing it and finding buyers. For day traders, they're looking at that level. And we've had this zone on here for a while talking about it, but you can see it actually made a new low, but then it rallied a little bit. So day traders will be looking at market structure a lot. Um, that big initial reaction from jobs numbers, of course, selling it through. I'd prefer it does something like this. If that happened, I'd probably be a little bit more bullish on gold. Uh, so yeah, or 2055 getting closed above would be a big deal. So some stuff to talk about this week if we get it. Oil looks pretty bad. It keeps selling off. We did unfortunately have the bias towards the short side as we discussed. Um, it's pretty much a classic setup in terms of what happened up here. And our aim was originally 78 we breached through 79 with the daily close, we were going to 82 to 84. We just didn't see it. So we're back down into kind of like where we've seen a lot of trade before, but oil with that kind of weekly looks like it could have more selling to come. 
And that's showing you again that realistically yields actually should be turned towards the downside because usually that's what happens with oil. Apple, you can see so close yet so far. Didn't quite hit that most traded alert zone I had. Um, but if you did watch it and you're buying around there, you would have been pretty happy with the session because it ended up moving about 3.72 back into your favor. Now, the weekly still is pretty bad. Um, the daily obviously shows a lot of strength and decent volume in it. So this could be a catalyst to see more markets go up and go ballistic. But yeah, Apple just bouncing off that zone. Tesla still trapped in the area, as we expect. I'd like to see a new low for Tesla. Maybe even like this, this, that would be pretty cool. Or this, this. Um, there will be a good trade coming forward, I think, for Tesla. And at the moment, credit sellers would be pretty happy with themselves. Let's take a look at Meta now. So Meta opened at 450 plus, and then it went all the way to 486. Now, this is a pretty big move for Meta. And you can see here on the charts that it had massive volume. Now, someone did place a big trade, as we know, um, but we didn't see any huge selling yet. I will be watching Meta like a hawk this week, along with Amazon and possibly Nvidia as it just approached its 12 month target. If you held it to this point and you weren't just a long term investor just celebrating, uh, then you're doing pretty good because for me, you know, a lot of the time 600 would have been one of my targets here for, for this particular stock. But it just keeps driving higher and higher and higher. And if they start to see big sales, it'll bring the market with it. Let's now have a look at semiconductors. So we talked about the island reversal here, which is still in play. And of course, the markets have rallied forward. Now, again, NVIDIA has been saving the semiconductor market because underneath is quite bad. And you can see here that we're coming back. Um, we still have the possibility of selling and island reversal at the TP zone. So still technically a weak market internal there. HSI, which is the Hang Seng Index, you can see here still holding up above. If you think it's something like a CQQ, that's been absolutely getting flogged. And as we already saw with the stats before, we're probably in capitulation now. So the stats are starting to turn into the more positive side. And we'll be watching very closely around Chinese New Year, which I think is a week away um, what's going on with that market. Now let's go to the US 2K. So US 2K has literally two possibilities. Buyers are here and we've speculated sellers sit around 1985. So there's both a buy and sell case going on in this market right now from the internals underneath. You can also see if you have a look, that's a big doji with two weak rejections up here. So it kind of points to me as maybe being a little bit more bearish uh, from the Russell 2K side. Um, but yeah, very interesting point there. And you can make a case for both of those levels. If you're long at those zones, I wouldn't blame you. Another island reversal for the Qs, which of course was here. And then we move down and then we move back up. Now to stop a freight train can sometimes take a wike off. This was actually a slightly higher high, I believe. Um, but overall, yeah, still a island reversal, still an interesting zone for it. And as always, we're being led more by the S&P than anything else. So let's take a look at the S&P. It comes up, hits 49.75, then sells a little bit. Now, this was also, as we reported before, a big uh, Fibonacci zone. So basically, as, as the SPX said, uh, 49.75 was an SPX 1618 extension. So this is a normal TP zone for some people that have been rallying it up. We know where our big swing trade comes in in terms of actually seeing big market weakness, which is 48.50. You might want to set an alert around 4,900 this week. If we do close underneath that, it's probably a decent sign of weakness as well. We've got multiple highs here that are very interesting as well um, in terms of the way the market has broken. And of course, 5K is going to be a huge watch level, giant amounts of options, huge amounts of opportunity for retail traders and everybody else that's going to be on the small timeframes there with reactions around here and market structure being such an important zone. But we did get very close. And oftentimes when you're approaching a big round number, and we'll do a special on this in our next video, a big round number, if we haven't already hit it, a big round number often does bring with it some, some I would say, some interesting reactions. So it's not very often you hit a big Z level for the first time. I mean, the last time we hit a big level was here. And you might notice, I'll just quickly put it there, uh, that we got really close, 39.66, then we sold off. Then we got to 39.87, then we sold off. So it's pretty normal for a big roundy to uh, to kind of find these types of levels. You can see here 3,000, the first ever hit, we ended up selling off. So it's not uncommon. It's something that uh, we will be looking at, and this is a huge zone for the markets. We also have a special coming up on healthcare soon, so make sure to sub for that if you're interested. Bitcoin, 
boring coin. That's what we talk at at the moment. Uh, yeah, if you're in the long side, you're probably still happy. If you're not underneath this level, you're not really going to be thinking about swing trades. And shorters are still short from li literally this zone. You can see how it's defending it, uh, which is the price of around 43.5. So if it does break through this high being 44, we're probably moving back up to 46, 47. So a lot of stuff going on there on the charts. Week ahead, not as much as you might think in terms of overall actual big news. We've got the RBA cash statements. We've got ISM services, PMI, and that's really the main stuff. So it's going to be allowed to go with the earnings. And of course, that means you should subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed what you saw so far and you want to go around with even more info coming out this week. And we have our free VIP weekly newsletter as well, guys. So join us in another week of exploration of the markets. We're about to witness potentially history. But do remember, when we approach the big zone, often we have seen a little bit of selling before. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.